Southampton, 1938. Rendezvous of ocean liners. Britain's premier passenger port. Gateway to the world. A haven of tranquil efficiency with an infinite capacity for taking the strains imposed on her by visitors flooding in from both hemispheres. But when in 1939 the blast of war blew in her ears, Southampton, with a nascent energy, collected within her ocean gates a mighty stream of war material to aid the champions of democracy in their bitter fight against the monster of Nazism, let loose on a Europe trembling and unprepared. Southampton was at once a frontline port, a role not new to her, she'd played it so well in the last war. Since then, huge land reclamations and extensive additions to her docks had pitted her for the gigantic task on which she was now about to embark. The needs of the BEF had to be met, and their supplies, countless objects in enormous quantities, had to be shipped. The ships and the docks to accommodate them were there, at Southampton. Though the tempo had quickened, the proverbial docks efficiency remained unimpaired. The slogan, Southern for service, yet obtained. With the supplies came the men, the advance guard of that heroic company which was to fight and lose in that first tragic episode on the fair fields of France. The boys of the BEF, with spirits high and yet untrammeled by apprehension, faced their immediate future with a firm conviction that the right would triumph in the end, and that their cause was right, though the end did not come for many a long day. These were days of intensive activity and excitement at Southampton Docks. Men, supplies, in fact the whole panoply of war, passed continuously through the sheds and over the quays. The Southern Railway personnel worked ceaselessly in cooperation with the military. On a flood tide of high adventure, the BEF embarked for destinations somewhere in France. As a prelude to future operations, Liners, famous in their peacetime roles, took over their job of war work and steamed away to act as transports for Dominion troops. Many southern ships, which heretofore had played big parts in Britain's business and pleasure trips, went to war with the best of them. Among them was the little Sandown, which for years had paddled her docile way between Portsmouth and Rye. Here she is, equipped to sweep enemy mines from our shores and from the paths of our vessels. But in spite of ceaseless vigilance by the minesweepers, Southampton reaped a bitter harvest of damaged ships. Up to D-Day, over 800 of them were reconditioned in the dockyard shops.